Here today I'm working on a 2006 Fiat Decato Camper and we're going to be putting a new radio into the vehicle. The vehicle's had the standard sort of blower pump setup fitted from new and we're going to be fitting a DAB aerial and radio into this vehicle. It's not a difficult job to do, a little bit time consuming, I'm just going to show you the basics on how to take the vehicle apart to get the stuff in the right place for a decent reception. First things first, uh, make sure you've got all your bits and bobs. Here, like I say, we've got a Pioneer radio going in this one. We have a DAB aerial. This is a windscreen mount one. And you have to pay particular attention to the overhang on your camper van because obviously it can interfere with reception. So we're mounting this slightly differently to where we'd put it in a car. This particular one's Bluetooth, so it comes with a microphone that will hang up in the corner. And to get the radio out, the factory radio, you're going to need the original release keys or buy some. First of all, pop your fascia off, take that off, pop that safety out of the way, pop the trim, normally just sort of pull it, there you go, clip, off that comes, keep that out of the way, and then your release keys normally just slide down, in the right place, there we go, busy looking at the camera and not what I'm meant to be doing, there we go, click, click, you heard them lock, pull, just need both hands to pull these out. There we go, just spread them slightly, these, so just push them apart slightly, your radio will come out. Please note the back of it's metal, uh, you don't want it to scratch anything here, so just put something in between it if you're going to rest it on it, you know, a rag or a bit of cardboard or something, and uh, pull your radio out. On the rear, you have your bayonet aerial, which just pulls clean off, and you have standard ISO connectors. got the extra one at the top here, pinch both sides, pull it out, and then you have your two more ISOs, one's for power, one's for speakers. The bottom one's power, top one's speakers. Now on a camper van, normally you want the radio to run without the ignition key in, so obviously it's powered slightly different to a car, so you want it to come on all the time, whether the key's in or out. On a car, you only want the radio to come on when the key is in. Okay, so we'll only be having one power feed, which is actually built into the block, nice and simple wiring. We've pulled our aerial connector off, like I say it's just a, a pull fit, and it comes with an adapter on the end. There we go. Pull the adapter off, and that's your normal bayonet fit, which will fit 99% of the aftermarket radios that you can buy. So that's nice and easy. Put that to one side, you don't really need it. For these two blocks, which I won't do because if I squeeze them, the radio will fall on the floor. Squeeze the pin and pull. Take them both out. Okay, that leaves you with the security cage. Now, you'll either have these tabs here bent backwards, so you need to lever them up, or these ones here. Just go around, lever all the tabs up, and then you should be able to just slightly squeeze the cage, not wreck it, just sort of squeeze it together and pull. This one's been in some years, it's the original, like I was saying. Let's get that out. Cage is now out. We're going to slide that back on the original radio for safekeeping. Keep it all together. If you want to sell the vehicle, put the original radio back in. You'll have all the necessary parts to do it. Connect-wise, we won't be bothering with this one. It's simply not needed on this installation, so we'll tuck that out of the way. These are the two we're going to be needing, and obviously your aerial. We need both those. Before we do that, though, we need to make some room, some access to run the cable to the DAB antenna. And that's where we start moving along the dash and removing sections. Start by opening your glove box, if you're on this particular model of camper van. You have TX25 screws. Remove this one, this one, this one, and then this one. And then we're going to move across to this area. Phillips head screws there, you just twist them half a turn, panel drops down. There we go, we've twisted those, they're out. I'm sorry about the background noise here, unfortunately I don't get to choose the location of where I'm doing these videos, so uh, it's not something I can do anything about. There we go, pop that out. There's access to your fuse box, should you need it. And next up we're going to pop out this pocket here. To pop the pocket, normally grab the edge, clip, out it comes. So you're getting nice access now to run all your cabling through so you can easily get everything to where you want it to go. Next up, we're going to open the glove box, get the two TX25s out from above here, and we've also removed 
these two. But for now, we're going to need a socket because it's quite hard to get to. They're just tucked up near the latch, look, just here. Take both those out. With both those out, everything will start to come loose. Your last remaining TX30 down here will actually make the whole thing drop. So I'm just going to have to hang on to it just to pull it all forward. With this bottom one removed, try and secure the weight with one hand while you remove this Allen key or TX30, whichever you're going to use here. And you'll have already removed the side one here, which was a TX25 anyway. So that's your last one. Just support it now, ready for it to, because look, the whole lot is now loose. There we go. And there we go. We now have fantastic access to get all our cabling running across and access to two TX25s, one here and one here, to remove this top pocket. Go ahead and take those out, lift your pocket up. Both TX25s out. And there we go, take that out of the way. You can now quite easily run your DAB antenna cable all the way across, up and up to the screen pillar, which is where we're going with it. Back inside the camper, this is our DAB aerial. It's sticky back, it's meant to stick on the window screen and has a copper strip for earthing to the screen pillar uh, to stop static, etc. It's powered, so on the end of it, it has a DAB connector and a black wire that we connect to the blue wire coming out the back of your new stereo. So that's the blue wire to power it, okay? We're gonna take the cable together and run it basically so the connector comes out of here, across here down, and up the screen pillar. So tuck your, your cables underneath, necessarily put uh, like a, a flexi bar through to tape them to and pull them through. Nice and easy. I've got my mic cable here as well. And then we'll follow through all the way along like I was saying. Next up we're going to be removing the screen trim pillar here. Three Phillips screws, one here, one here, one at the top. Word of warning, if you don't like creepy crawlers, just beware. I've found all sorts from cockroaches, spiders, and even a dead mouse behind one of these things in the past, especially if it's an older vehicle like this one. With all three bolts removed, you can pull it forwards. And all we're gonna do is, I'll pull this out in a minute when I've got both hands free, is sand a bit of the paint off here so it's got an earth for the aerial. We'll apply the aerial which is a sticky substance, and we're going to put it at the bottom of the window screen here. Now, in a car, we'd normally put it at the top, but because of the overhang of a camper, they get better reception down at the bottom here. So it's, it's just going to sort of sit sort of here. I'm going to need both hands free to do it, so I'll skip forward to when I've done it and then show you where the cable's routed. And there we go. There's our aerial. So it starts here, look. Sticky back, like I was saying, sticks here. Earthing point around the side here. We've put the trim back on, put the three screws in. Pull the door seal away slightly so we can actually run the cable down the edge here and we're going to loop it round under here, up through because as we've removed all this to gain access so it's nice and easy to do, up above this and then up here and through where like I showed you there and that, that's how we're going to run the, uh, the DAB cable part of it. Obviously when you've done this part of it you could reassemble it. I would recommend though that you, you finish putting your radio in and test it all first. Just one quick point, we're quickly running our microphone cable that came up the screen pillar with the dab aerial. If your headlining's a little bit loose, what you can do is wrap some cable ties around it, snip the ends off and tuck those up. They're just to like pad the wire out a bit so that it doesn't fall down when you hit one of the lovely notorious potholes, you don't want the cable dangling down. Once you've done that, you can just tuck it all the way along. As you can see, I'm putting the microphone right here, right up on the headlining so it's got a nice out of the way uh, range to get the voice when you're talking. Your new radio will come with pretty much the same as what you took the other one out with. A metal securing cage that we need to slide into the radio aperture. An adapt cable, this plugs into the back of the radio and has the square plugs on that will plug straight into the wiring harness of the vehicle. So go ahead, pop your cage in into the, uh, the holes, quite a simple thing to do. Feed your wires through, pop it in and then twist some of the tabs up so that it's locked into place. With cage in place, wiring connectors clicked in. The third one that was on this particular vehicle just took it down out of the way. You're not going to need that at all. Don't forget to do your little locking tabs. Like I say, you can normally pop a screwdriver in and just twist. Do a couple each side. And that's the security side of it to stop it from, you know, sort of pulling out. We do the other side. And then you're ready to connect your radio up and give it a twirl. Or a try. So just before I shove the radio in, we've got a dab plugged in, dab aerial. Normal aerial plugged in. 
because it's a powered DAB radio, there's our black wire that we ran from the antenna to the blue wire, which outputs power to the DAB antenna, crimped in, our microphone plugged in, and our main power cable plugged in. Obviously, when you push the radio back in the slot, make sure you don't trap anything, pull it through as needed, tuck it down into the little recesses that are in there. And there we go, radio installed. Just be careful when you push all the wires back, it can be really tricky sometimes to get them clicked in out of the way. Uh, tidy up any loose cabling that you've got, like so. Uh, I can't actually show it you playing any music or anything because I'll get done for copyright on YouTube, they're very sharp on that type of thing, but uh, I assure you the signal strength will be perfectly adequate, not a problem at all with that aerial in that location. And obviously, reverse, you know, the sequence that I showed you to take this apart, pop it back together in the reverse order. I won't drag the video out showing you how to pop all this back together, just literally reverse what I did and pop it all back together. Don't forget your two little sneaky screws that are underneath here when you do it, that hold all the uh, the lower half of this top panel on, because uh, everybody always forgets them, and then puts the glove box back in, and oh, I'm left with two screws. It's the two from under here. Guys, that is how you put a DAB radio in a typical camper van. Um, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I do try my best to answer you, but as you can probably imagine, I sort of get flooded with questions every day, so I will try my best to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.